So I just want to welcome you. Feel at home. Kindly feel free. This is a very free discussion. We want to listen to presentations. We want to give comments where we can so that we improve on this program that all of us love, that all of us want to see launched today. As we go on, my name is Shadrach Mutavi. I'm working for the program Rural Youth Employment in the Agri-Food Sector as a Policy Advisor. And I continue to welcome uh, the new participants who are coming, who are streaming in slowly. Now I want to hand over to my colleague so that he can take us through the first steps of this program. Over to you, Dan. We now want to take a little time to watch a short clip that will help us to get the feel of what really is out there that young people are going through on a daily basis. My name is Betty Morgan. I'm 33 years old. I'm a farmer in Sierra County. Kilimoni Bees is a platform that is going to help support young people who are already in agribusiness. They are farming and taking to the market. And that is the way forward to go because young people are all over looking for employment, yet there is employment in farming. I'm into production of local vegetables. I'm leasing land. And so far, I can say it's so good because it's one year down the line. I'm not complaining. Those challenges are here and there because I'm still new in the field, but I can say it is very successful. And for me, I don't take the vegetables to the market directly. I have people who are already selling, but they are not producing. So I call them when it's ready, and they come, take, and go and sell. So for me, I bring the people who want to buy it to the farm. And even when I have orders, because sometimes you get somebody who has visitors and he wants maybe for 100, 200, they call me and come to the farm. I was just listening to Betty, and I think Betty was creating a very interesting case that young people are moving around looking for employment, and yet there's employment in agriculture. And she was narrating to us exactly what she's doing in terms of shifting that paradigm, how she trying to access inputs for production, improve her levels of production, how she's linking up with people in the markets, especially those who are already selling, to find a way of getting her produce into the markets. We get someone to pray. Josephine, I don't know whether Josephine Love is with us. It looks like Josephine is not in. I can do it. Maybe maybe you'll pray for us, Shadra, kindly. Okay. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come unto you this time. Lord, we thank you because you are a great God. We thank you because you have taken care of us and you have given us this wonderful day. As we start this, the launch of this program, we give everything to you so that, God, you can guide us. You can guide us as we go through this program of the launch. You can guide us even beyond the program so that we can implement it for the benefit of your people or our dear God. I pray for each and every member who is here in this forum and those who are coming so that you can take care and protect them and bless them. I pray all that trusting and believing in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Shadrach. Dan, I can see we now have 62 participants. Is it, is it possible that we can get an overview of who they are and where they come from, please, Dan? That's actually a good idea, Shadra. What you can see is we have posted a poll asking where it is that you're logging from, whether it is in Bungoma or you're logging in from Kakamega, from Kisumu, from Siaya, from Vihiga. Nairobi, or elsewhere, kindly indicate by just choosing one of those options. Interesting, interesting results, interesting results. That we have quite a number of people within Nairobi, of course, as expected, because this is where the headquarters of where everything happens. 
But we have people from elsewhere. I'm assuming some of these are actually out of the country. Then I can see Vihiga, I can see Siaya, I can see Kisumu, Kakamega, and Bungoma. So basically, we seem to be representing almost all the regions that we expected would log in to this function. The, the second poll that we had was just about the institution you are representing again. And great, I can see already. So we have quite a number of us uh, representing the development partners. And of course, that is expected, being that we are part of this process. But I can also see research organizations represented, youth network, very good. The NGOs and civil societies, we have individuals from the private sector, and of course we have government, I think, and we have others. So we have people representing sectors that we may not have outlined in, uh, in, in some of those uh, choices that we gave you. Thank you very much. I think uh, that seems good to me. Shadrach, do you have anything? Over to you. It's quite good that we have quite a diversity of participants in this uh, lounge, which also indicates the kind of varied uh, stakeholders that will be required or we will need to work with in the implementation of this program and in the creation of employment opportunities for the youth in the rural areas. Thank you. Over to you, Dan. Thank you, Shadrach. So now that we have understood who is with us and which institutions we represent, we want to start the process with official opening remarks. And I'll start with a senior official of the German Embassy, who is also the head of development corporation, Mr. Daniel Alka. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Alker. I am the head of development cooperation section at the German Embassy in Nairobi. Honorable guests, representatives of the government, academia, private sector, rural youth leaders, entrepreneurs and partners. Thank you for joining the virtual launch of the initiative Rural Youth Employment in the Agri-Food Sector. In particular, I acknowledge the presence of Honorable Dr. Lina J.B. Kilimo, the Chief Administrative Secretary for Livestock, Fisheries, the Blue Economy and Agriculture. Ms. Anne Niaga, Chief Administrative Secretary for Corps Development and Cooperatives. Professor Hamadi Boga, Principal Secretary of State Department for Crops Development and Agricultural Research. In representation, the Principal Secretaries of State Departments for Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives. Professor Philip Kutuma, Deputy Governor of the County of Kakamega. Honorable Chief Executive Committee Members for Siaya, Bungoma, Kakamega, Vihiga, and Kisumu Counties, the representatives of the development partners, the youth organizations, implementing partners, and the private sector. Honorable guests, all protocols observed. Let me start by laying out why Germany is supporting Kenya to invest in promoting youth employment in the agricultural sector. In Kenya, the youth account for 35% of the population and for two thirds of the total labor force. Kenya's youth is known to be innovative, well-educated, flexible and tech savvy. The economic potential of the so-called youth bulge is high, while the employment opportunities are disproportionately low. More than 1.2 million young people enter the labor market each year. While the overall unemployment rate is 9%, unemployment amongst the youth reaches 26% and may even be more as a consequence of the current corona crisis. The systemic importance and at the same time robustness of the agricultural sector shows clearly during these days of the corona crisis. It also highlights the economic potentials for innovative business models here that are not limited to production only. Youth is driven away from high potential rural areas to urban centers 
due to an outdated image of the agri-food sector and its true employment potentials. There is an apparent mismatch of skills and supply-side driven training vis-a-vis -vis the actual demand for qualifications. Investing in the capacities and growth of youth-led agricultural enterprises reduces youth employment and unleashes the potentials of the sector. It paves the way for regional food security and economic development, both at local as well as at national level. Let me now come to the strategic focus of the German government, more specifically the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, in its cooperation with Kenya. BMZ has concentrated its cooperation with Kenya on one overarching game, aim. This overarching aim is bringing youth into employment. And this strategy to bring youth into employment, of course, focuses on the youth. They are the key drivers for growth to support national and regional trade, combat mal and undernutrition, and support a climate smart, sustainable and market oriented agricultural production and value addition. The German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development and the Government of Kenya jointly aim at bringing more youth into employment in the agri-food sector through a value chain and ecosystem-driven integrated employment approach. Our strategy is in line with the President's agenda of achieving 100% food security under the Big Four, the Agricultural Sector Transformation and Growth Strategy, as well as the Kenya Youth and Agribusiness Strategy. We will continue our close collaboration with the Kenyan government at national and county levels with the other development partners, as well as seek new partnerships with agricultural companies and SMEs that share our vision to increase rural youth employment through realistic and innovative opportunities in the sector. Let me now talk about the main projects, the main investment areas of German development cooperation in youth employment. In agriculture, projects implemented by the German governmental um, agencies, GIZ and KFW. A career in the agriculture and food sector is not limited to production. We need to identify and accelerate innovative business models, services and partnerships that can generate gainful employment in the short run and allow business to thrive and uplift the local and regional economy. This includes input supply, processing and marketing, as well as information and business development, transport, mechanization and other support services to the value chains. In order to achieve these um, objectives today, we are rolling out our German-Kenyan technical collaboration on rural youth employment project with a bilateral budget of 5 million euros and second, a special initiative project with a budget of 10 million euros, placing youth at the forefront of rural development. These projects of technical cooperation, GIZ, will later on be complemented by a third project of financial cooperation implemented by KFW in the amount of 13 million euros. The technical cooperation projects implement a joint initiative within the overall German Development Cooperation on Agriculture, Rural Development and Youth Employment. We have already strong foundations in Western Kenya with our partnerships since 2013. We are collaborating in policy, curricular and value chain development, rural services, as well as strengthening the self-organization in the sector. Our bilateral engagement will focus on structural challenges, skills development and improving framework conditions. The emphasis is specifically on improving labor supply through market-oriented and competence-based skills development and improving the self-organization and service orientation of entrepreneurial youth in the sector. The Special Initiative Project 
builds on the G20 initiative on youth employment spearheaded by our government. It builds on existing good practices and partners with a focus on value change, chains with a high potential for youth employment, as well as services along the value chains, startup promotion and matching as new strategic interventions with our, within our portfolio. We recognize especially the essential role of the private sector for sustainable agricultural and economic transformation and generation of employment. We are very, very glad today to launch these two projects of technical cooperation implemented by GIZ during these difficult times and we are expecting innovative approaches that not only help the youth in Western Kenya to find employment in the sector, but also to generate living examples that can be used in the whole of Kenya. For this reason, we are particularly pleased to see such a wide range of partners attending this launch today. I wish you and us all a very successful event today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just to comment a little on what uh, Mr. Daniel Elka has spoken about, started by acknowledging representation of Kenyan government, right from the national to the county level, and explained part of the rationale that makes the German government support the Kenyan government. And he explained that Kenya seems to have a robust population of young people who are highly skilled, who are agile and energetic, and yet unemployed. And while a lot of them are migrating to the urban areas looking for employment, we're still suffering from low employment rates of up to about 26%. However, he reckons that agriculture sector seems to have an opportunity that can transform this. And through training and correct investments, a lot of that can be transformed. He then went ahead to explain what the BMZ Corporation is doing in bringing the youth to employment and making them more employable, particularly in the food security sector, and through interlinks with the small and micro enterprises. He also explained the areas of investment by GIZ, where they're trying to accelerate business models that will improve the economy through provision of inputs, through expertise to encourage processing and mechanization and improving on mechanisms that help to link all that to the market where everything happens. And finally, he explained that the, youth, the Rural Youth Employment Program that we are launching today is one of the instruments they are using in a structured way to deal with structural challenges, to improve in areas of skills development and applicability of all that along the agriculture value chains. Uh, Shadrach, I don't know whether there's something that comes to mind as we close this. I think you have captured everything that has been said very well. And it is very important for us to recognize that, that the German government really has come in a very strong way to support the issue and a very big issue about youth employment and creating opportunities in the rural areas. Our next speaker to make opening remarks is Professor Hamadi Boga. And just to say something little about Professor Boga, Professor Boga is currently the Principal Secretary in the State Department of Crop Development and Agricultural Research within the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives. And prior to that, he was a Professor of Microbiology at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology and thereafter acted as a Vice-Chancellor of Taita Taveta University since 7th October 2016. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Botany and Zoology and a Master of Science in Microbiology from Kenyatta University in Kenya. He also holds a PhD in Microbial Ecology and Microbiology from University of Constance in Germany and a postdoctoral research team at the Max Planck Institute for Terrestrial Microbiology in Malburg, Germany. He is also a Humboldt Fellow, and from 2010 to 2015, he was a Humboldt Ambassador Scientist for Kenya. 
Professor Boga has previously held various administrative positions in Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, including being the chairman of Botany Department from 2002 to 2004, the director of Biotechnology Research 2005, and the dean faculty of science in 2007, as well as principal of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, Taita Taveta Campus, in 2007 to 2012. He is an extensive international and local network of scientific engagements and collaborations and has over 70 scientific publications in international journals and has supervised over 46 students for masters and PhD. Karibu, Professor Hamadi Boga. Okay, good uh, morning everyone. Um, my name is uh, Professor Hamadi Boga. I'm the Principal Secretary in charge of uh, Crops Development and Agricultural Research in the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives. Uh, we, we have here today my colleagues, the Principal Secretaries in charge of Fisheries and the Principal Secretary in charge of Cooperatives and the Principal Secretary in charge of Livestock. I'm representing, and of course we have uh, the CAS for crops and research, and the CAS for livestock and uh, fisheries in this uh, event. Uh, today we, we we are launching this uh, initiative together with GIZ and the German government. We are really appreciative of this long-term collaboration on capacity development in various agricultural value chains, especially in the western part of Kenya. And this has been a long-term collaboration that is beneficial to both uh, uh, parties. It supports our transformation strategy, which is a new strategy launched last year, the Agriculture Sector Transformation and Growth Strategy, which aims to transform the way we do our agriculture. We have faced a number of challenges in the agriculture sector. Key among them is low productivity, poor soil health, climate change, and also the fact that the participation of women and youth has been rather very low. The average age of the Kenyan farmer is 60 years old. Uh, most women don't own land. Most youth don't own land. And yet uh, the average age of the Kenyan consumer is 17 years old. So it means for us to bring about any transformation, we have to include the particip participation of women and youth in the agricultural enterprise in a big way across the country. And this initiative uh, sets us on a path towards that. Uh, last year also, as we were launching the STGS, we also launched the Youth in Agribusiness Strategy which identified all the issues that keep youth out of agribusiness and agriculture, uh, and we developed solutions for them. And uh, part of what this project is doing is addressing some of those issues that keep youth and women out of agriculture. Some of them include the lack of land ownership, the lack of financing, the lack of knowledge and capacity, and uh, I think uh, through this program, working together with GIZ, we'll be able to address most of these uh, challenges and bring in more youth into agriculture and support them to stay there because uh, the transformation will only happen once we have more youth participation in agribusiness. And the other initiative, and uh, when we talk about agriculture, we are not just sticking to crops. We are also looking at uh, the livestock value chain, the fish value chain, and also forming the youth into groups so that they can create uh, synergy and scale and so that we can help them to also find markets for the agricultural produce. And also as part of the training and capacity building programs, we are working with the partner institutions like the Kenya Agricultural Livestock Research Institute and also the universities of agriculture in the country so that we can strengthen the capacities of the youth to engage in the agricultural value chain. One of the key areas, uh, as you are all aware, is that uh, 
90% of the Kenyan farmers are smallholder. And their income levels are very, very low. A day, a Kenyan farmer earns about 325 shillings. Uh, and this is keeping them below the poverty line. And part of the solution that we are developing is to reform the subsidy program, the, the support that was going to farmers was concerned, so that we can support these uh, smallholder farmers to earn more from their hard labor by supporting them through e-voucher, because uh, previously we used to give them the inputs, but that was uh, riddled with a lot of problems of inefficiency. But with the e-voucher, we are creating an ecosystem around the farmers of SMEs that support the farmer with inputs, with mechanization, with off-check contracts, with the storage, and with processing facilities so that the complete value chain is supported. And we are targeting about 1,000 SMEs that will be youth-led, probably women-led, and uh, working with partners by changing some of our funding mechanisms. We hope by 2022 we'll have created 1,000 SMEs. And I'm happy that this program that we are doing with GIZ is already contributing to that because uh, we don't expect the government to do all of it. We expect partners also to come and help us implement part of this. There are about three million farmers in Kenya or farming households, and we want to reach as many of them as possible, and especially through the youth and women. And so as, as we conclude, we look forward to continued collaboration with GIZ and the German government and the German people so that we can sustain these interventions into the future. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the German Development Corporation, which uh, gives money to us, of course, through GIZ, to enable us to undertake these programs. Thank you, Danke <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you much, much, Professor. I think Thank Professor, you. speaking on behalf of other principal secretaries in the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives, has outlined a number of things that uh, the Kenya government has put in place and around which they are going to work together with this program that we are launching today. Now, I, 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 I'm wondering, Shadrach, as you listen to all these things being said and knowing where you have come from, I'm wondering whether you can make a comment in terms of some of the processes that have been put in place that are now culminating in some of the things that we are seeing today. Over to you, Shadra. Yeah, it is good that we have gotten two very important uh, speeches, which relate also to the genesis of this program, how this program came into being. You know, and also some of the participants who are in this uh, forum at the moment, who are in this uh, conference, participated in the formulation of this program. To start with, the program came into being through the bilateral negotiations between the Kenya government and the Federal Republic of Germany in 2018, where it was proposed that we see, seek the, and start a program to support the youth on youth initiatives in the western part of the country. Of course, this was followed by appraisal missions, several of them, three of them, the first one pre-appraisal missions, the mission in last year, 2019 March, then in August and October there were two other appraisal missions which <laughs> culminated with this program. Some of the participants in these processes are actually here. Uh, Professor Kambudo Pascal, are you in? If you are in, probably you could clap your hand and then we can see whether you are one of those who participated representing the private sector. We had uh, members from the private sector. Yes, I can see Professor Kongudu is clapping his hand, is showing that he's in. Uh, 
Professor Kambudo, okay, maybe it is not possible, but I would have wished if you could have been able to say hi, maybe the connectivity is not good. That's very good. That is to show that this process has been inclusive. We have brought in everyone who is a stakeholder in this process to ensure that this program, which is being developed, is robust so that it can really achieve what it was meant to achieve. I think we want to now show a short video of a conference that was held in Western Kenya, but a conference that was really the culmination of a lot of these things we have talked about. The Youth in Agribusiness Western Region Conference was hosted by the counties of Bungoma, Kakamega and Siaya and held at the Bukura Agricultural College. The event attracted more than 700 rural youths and other stakeholders in the agriculture business. We now have the big four, the manufacturing, the housing, affordable housing, we have the universal health care, and we have the 100% food and nutrition security, which is the ministry now in agriculture. All the other pillars cannot work without the 100% and food, even universal housing, even universal health care. Some of the technologies that the young people need to adopt in order to produce well in agribusiness is ICT. With ICT you can do a lot of marketing. We encourage such forums because one, we, it's a good learning forum whereby as a youth we are able to learn from other youths what they are doing elsewhere and uh, we are also able to showcase maybe what has worked for us, for the other youths to see and we are able to link with the county government, the national government, and to identify the opportunities for uh, synergies. And three, we are also able to, I think, create that network within ourselves as a, as a youth. We are, we are working with the Minister of uh, Agriculture that is under the ground government for technical support. We are working with uh, development partners like uh, JZ for supporting us uh, in kind or uh, helping us access some of this clean plant material from Calro. Seeing innovations, feeling them, it ended with a declaration of the youth that was handed over to the government and here in the case the governor of Siaya with the aspirations and with the demands of the youth in developing agribusiness and agripreneurship in their counties. This declaration is a joint statement. Bungoma, Kakamega and Sia counties shall consider full youth involvement and participation in formulation and implementation of enacted policy documents for youth through gainful employment opportunities in agribusiness and related support services. That access to land and finances should be considered for youth agricultural development projects. That projects and funds targeting young agribusiness entrepreneurs should be given priority in, in the implementation of environmental conservation and management initiative. We commit to, one, participate willingly and cooperate with authorities towards developing policies and programs to enhance youth participation in sustainable agribusiness and environmental conservation initiatives. Two, we also commit to develop interest and be motivated towards developing and implementing agribusiness and related projects. There's nothing that is impossible. We need to be patient, we need to be persistent in each and everything that we are doing. And also, it's not a must to get trained in a specific area. For myself, I'm not uh, trained in uh, agriculture, but I'm able to run a dairy farm. So let's have that urge of being more of job creators and not uh, job seekers. The video brings out a number of things that I thought I could talk about before we move. One, it brings out the importance of agriculture in us realizing the Big Four agenda. That even as a country, we may not be able to realize the Big Four agenda unless and until we invest adequately in agriculture. It also brings in the things that you seem to resonate with, one being ICT and how, in their view, ICT can be used as a tool to help improve what they are doing and how they are doing it within the agriculture value chains, particularly marketing and sourcing for inputs. 
It also brings out that the youth are so concerned about networking amongst themselves, and they see that as a way to improve skills, bring in new ideas, bring in new resources, but also build their synergies that then they can leverage on to engage more meaningfully with the county and the national governments. In the same video, the youth pass resolutions. One, that they'd love to see themselves more included in policy processes. They would like to see themselves playing better roles in terms of access to land and access to finance. And they make two solemn commitments. One is to continue to participate willingly and to sustain their levels of interest and motivation in the processes that transform their very situation as young people. Uh, I want to give Shadrach just a minute to say something before I invite Professor Philip Kutima, who was a participant in this conference, to also make a comment. Shadrach, over to you. Thank you very much, Dan. I think uh, most, I also attended the, the conference and most of us attended the conference. It was very nice. And the young people managed to get opportun an opportunity to express themselves. And that was very good. Over to you, Dan. Okay, so before I give uh, Professor Kutuma a chance to say something, may I first introducing, introduce His Excellency, Professor Philip Kutima, who is the Deputy Governor in Kakamega County. Professor Kutima is the first Deputy Governor of Kakamega County, currently serving in his second term. And also important to note that during the formation of the county government in Kakamega, Professor Kutima was given an added responsibility of steering the Department of Agriculture. So he's currently the CECM for Agriculture in Kakamega County. Prior to this, Professor Kutima was a lecturer at Egerton University and Jomo Kenyatta University of Science and Technology. He was the Deputy Executive Director of African Institute for Capacity Development from 2009 to 2013. He has extensive experience in capacity development in East and Central Africa region. And during his stint at AICAD, he worked with various organizations, including the World Bank, the European Union, JICA, the Canadian International Development Agency, amongst others. Professor Kutima holds a Master of Science and a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Science with an academic and professional career that spans more than 22 years. Over to you, Professor. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Philip Kutima, the Deputy Governor of Kakameka County, and as well, I'm the, uh, the CEC in charge of uh, agriculture, livestock development, veterinary services, cooperatives, and education. Today, I'm very happy to be associated with the, the German Development Corporation that we has worked quite a lot in Kakameka, and it has been involved in two other counties of Pungoma and uh, Siaya. Uh, sometimes last year we had a meeting of about uh, 5,000 youth that uh, congregated at Pukura Agricultural College, and we had a very, very successful meeting uh, uh, that we identified certain areas that we could be at for to help the, the youth. And uh, we are going ahead. We would like to thank the German Development Corporation for the initiative through the GIZ. Youth employment is, is very important in Kakameka and the Lake region because, uh, as you know in Kenya, uh, the youth form the, the highest percentage of the population now. and. Um, uh, most youth have been moving from the rural areas to the urban areas. And we would like the youth to remain uh, in the rural areas because agriculture seems to be becoming more of a, for the old people rather than the young. And we would like uh, our youth to know that uh, agriculture is a business. They can be able to stay in the rural areas, work very well, and um, be able to do business well. 
they form uh, in the lake region, they, uh, like Kakamega, they form about 45%, just like the other counties also in the lake region, 45% of the youth is a very, very high percentage. So we would like to encourage the youth to remain in the rural areas and be able to carry out the business. It's uh, important to the county governments because we, the county government of Kakameka and uh, the other counties would like to, uh, to improve the livelihoods from the earnings that, that we get in agriculture. We would like to increase the food production, nutrition, security, because of, uh, we do not have uh, in some places. The current government of Kakameka, when we came in in 2013, we tried to initiate uh, um, farm subsidy so that we can be able to produce enough food. And we would like to, uh, to have agriculture. This is, this is uh, as a business. This would reduce the, the crime that is uh, rampant in quite some areas. We also have, as I said, a reduction of the rural urban migration that is, uh, is there. We'd like to reduce that. We'd also contribute to the economic growth of the county as well as the whole region. In the countdown of Kakameka, we have uh, taken a number of steps to improve uh, the ag agribusiness sector. We have uh, appointed the youth advisors in the county governments. We have enhanced uh, uh, technical capacity for the youth in order to empower them. Um, we are offering the youth business opportunities to supply uh, various agricultural products and agribusiness products, uh, like we have the Monami youth agroprocessors that are supplying animal feeds. This uh, Monami was visited by the, the German ambassador in Kenya sometimes last year. We have uh, on also an example of Lian farm owned by the youth who was identified during the Bukura meeting. We have also youth in our business that are benefiting from county subsidy where we have several subsidies, farm subsidies, poultry subsidies, fish subsidies that they can be able to take part. And uh, as well, we have the counties have recognized the agribusiness youth associations and have incorporated their leaders in their various committees to help the youth. We have various programs that have been established in the, in the, in the counties, especially Kakameka County. We have established the ADVET program in the polytechnics, especially the agricultural technical vocational education training, uh, where we identify certain youth. The youth are involved in agriculture, they're involved in dairy, the agribusiness, and uh, uh, hot culture. We have also a provision of seed capital for the advert graduates so that, so that when they finish their programs, we can be able to keep them some seed money to start a business in, in their areas. Uh, we have farm input subsidy that we are also giving to the youth that target mostly the youth. And we have the Count Youth and Women Empowerment Program. This is a program that is taking about uh, uh, 3,000 youth and women and uh, 50 per, per word because we have 60 words that uh, help to improve the uh, business in various uh, words. And uh, then we have introduced in Kakameka uh, the microfinance cooperation program that will lend some seed money to the youth to be able to start businesses. I would like to mention that the, the county has realized they need to have a, a strategy and a roadmap for the youth in the agribusiness. Currently, we do not have any program that is in place, but there's a national youth agribusiness strategy for 2018-2022 that we are trying to domesticate in the, in the county. And we'll also explore the possibilities coming up with a policy that addresses the challenges and needs unique to Kakameka and the Lake Region Economic Rock as a whole. Finally, on behalf of the Western Kenya counties of Bungoma, Siaya, Viika, Kisumu, and Kakameka, I wish to affirm that we are ready for the cooperation and the youth in the agribusiness project and will support and work with the 
the German Development Corporation through GIZ in the proposed joint initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kutima, for that very, very good uh, presentation of the issues that are being discussed in Kakamega. We can see you are having really robust programs already going on in Kakamega, and that is the essence of this program, working at the county level, working even at the lowest level so that the youth can come into employment, the youth can come into agribusiness. I hand over to Dan. I think when we started the story of Betty that was presented in a short clip kind of uh, helped to bring out the situation that most of the youth are in this country. It particularly looked at the things that many youth seem to miss that make them not participate adequately in the agriculture value chains and, and, and what are some of the aspirations or some of the things that they thought they could do to change the way things are happening. And then we listened to the opening remarks from the German Development Corporation and from the Kenyan government that in a way helped us to see the bigger picture of where this program is placed within the German embassy and within the Kenyan government, particularly the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives. Now then we went through a video that in a way has helped us to appreciate that beyond all that was happening at the national level, a lot had started on the ground and a lot of that culminated in a conference that we watched on the video. But finally, Professor Kotima's remarks, which I just want to highlight a little more, he brings out an important point that 45% of the populations in the counties in Western Kenya are actually youth. And he emphasizes one point that we already mentioned earlier, that the youth are still running for better pastures in urban centers while agriculture can actually create that transformation. And he says the things they are now for doing in the county is to improve agriculture and make it a business. And he has outlined a number of steps that they are undertaking, appointment of youth advisors, enhancing technical capacity of young people, creating opportunities and support, and creating county subsidies, as well as working with the agriculture business associations. Now, this to me now brings us to the very essence of why we are here today. It brings us to the climax of this process, which is the official launch of the program. And I would like to hand over to Shadrach now to take us through what we will go through in the official opening of this program. Over to you, Shadrach. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you very much uh, for the way you have so ably gone through that process, even with a small, of course, small hitch of here and there, of the uh, technicalities of things. Now we come to the what we have been waiting for, what we have been all eager to what we are all eager to see today, and that's the official launch. And the official launch in this is going this is going to be done by two chief and administrative secretaries in the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, Livestock Fisheries and Cooperatives. And the first is going to be Madam Anne Nyaga, who is the Chief Administrative Secretary in the State Department for Crop Development and Agricultural Research and Cooperatives in the Ministry of Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives. Of course, in the position of Chief Administrative Secretary, she deputizes, she deputizes the Cabinet Secretary in the overall administration and strategic direction, policy direction of the agriculture function. Presently, she's also overseeing the implementation of 13 national projects in the State Department for Crop Development and Agricultural Research. Prior to her appointment in the, to be the Chief Administrative Secretary, Madam Anyaga had served in the M County Government as a Minister for Agriculture, Cooperative Development, Livestock and Fisheries, where she was also in charge of policy formulation. I have to say, Madam Anyaga spearheaded the first domestication of the youth in agribusiness strategy 
in Embu County. We are to address the issues of youth in our county. Madam Ann also has been in charge of a program called 4H, whose who goal is to develop leadership responsibility and life skills through learning programs. Madam Anyaga has a, a Bachelor of Science degree from Egerton University on biomedical science and technology. So I welcome Madam Anyaga to give us a speech and give us part of the lounge. Welcome, Madam. Uh, my name is Anne Yaga. I'm the Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Co Cooperatives. We are here today to launch the Rural Youth in Agri uh, U Rural Youth in Agribusiness um, Initiative by the GIZ. And um, first and foremost, let me take this opportunity to thank the German Development Corporation through the GIZ Initiative that uh, that is uh, implementing this particular program and also for the continued uh, collaboration between uh, G uh, uh, GIZ and the Ministry of Agriculture. The Kenya Youth in Agribusiness Strategy is a comprehensive um, uh, document that was developed in co consultation with the county government and most specifically the youth. The strategy was aimed at um, highlighting and um, being able to identify the problems that the youth uh, face in, in, in the agricultural sector so that we can be able to have a comprehensive uh, ap approach uh, strategy to how we, we unlock the sector to make it more productive for the youth and be able to unlock the business opportunities for them. We came up with an 11 uh, strategic, um, key strategic uh, issues that we picked uh, that the youth themselves highlighted as having been the challenges that they were facing in the sector. And through this strategy, we were able to come up with strategic objectives and also strategic interventions. We have an example of Enable Youth Program that addresses the issue of access to affordable financial services and also access to skills, information and uh, knowledge. We have, we will, uh, in, the, in the program implementation and the design of this particular program, we are, we are setting up uh, eight incubation centers where we are able to incubate the youth ideas and uh, their innovations for scale up, adoption and, uh, and, uh, and uptake. So we also have uh, the issue of uh, access uh, to financial uh, services where we, we are, will be able to disseminate and disperse uh, low interest rates. These ones are ranging from 0% to 5% interest rates and also be able to de-risk the, uh, the, the sector for the youth to be able to engage in. So this is just one example of, of a program that is able to uh, address just two of these strategic uh, issues. So we have uh, other programs. I'll give an example of uh, a program that we call ASDSP. We have also NARIG. We also have KSAP. And these are, these are programs that are running in all the 47 uh, counties. You'll find that they have aspects of uh, addressing issues of access to markets, uh, access to information uh, and, and, and research and, and technology. So basically our programming uh, mainstreams uh, youth issues and um, uh, youth interventions. So you'll find that some pro programs are geared towards addressing issues of capacity building, some are geared towards addressing issues of mar market access, some issues of value addition, some uh, issues of, of research and technology development and so forth. So these uh, challenges seem to be very, very similar in, in terms of um, the kind of uh, the group, uh, uh, the, the kind of um, the numbers of the youth that are coming up saying these were the challenges that they were facing. So in terms of us being able to, as a nation, to address the challenges uh, and uh, th that the youth face in this particular sector, it is wise and it is important, uh, important of us as a nation to be able to domesticate this strategy and uh, be able to take advantage of all the programs that we implement through the, 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 through the counties uh, and in partnership with the national government and also with development partners. Also the, on the issue of um, um, uh, uh, the negative perception towards uh, agribusiness or agriculture by the young people, again we are in the process of reviving and rebranding our agricultural clubs so that we become very deliberate to introduce our young children to agriculture at a very tender age and also be able to equip them with life skills so that they can be able to relate to this particular sector in a way that is sustainable in the near future. So our appeal is also for the youth to, to also be uh, a, a vibrant 
and also to be very curious to, to know what the government is doing because all these programs have been designed for them and uh, uh, you know just step forward to reach out to the county governments or even to the national government uh, directly and also we also pledging to have a coordinated sector with the, the development partners so that we can we can have a very coordinated approach uh, in terms of uh, uh, distributing uh, the resources that also come from the development partners so that we can have each and every youth being catered for. Because at times we have realized that we have a duplication of, uh, of programs or we have uh, sp uh, specific development partners who are concentrated in, uh, in, one, in uh, particular areas of the counties. So we may want to have a, a, a situation where we, we have... Uh, development partners you know spread across the 47 counties so that each and every uh, person uh, or youth uh, or county can be able to uh, to uh, can be able to um, you know uh, benefit from the the kind of resources uh, be it knowledge resources be it financial resources that the, this development partners have and also the government uh, as one of our uh, commitments towards uh, coordinating the sector to address the key challenges that face the youth I would want to launch um, the Rural Youth Employment in Western Kenya initiative. Thank you. Over to you, Dan. Sometimes when I was listening to her, I was wondering if I could grow younger. <laughs> but I think he, she, she's brought out something important of how the youth were involved in the development of the strategy of, 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 of youth involvement in agribusiness. Secondly, spoken of how they have rolled out programs in all the 47 counties in this country and lastly even more important she has urged the youth not only not only by saying they are rebranding agriculture but urged the youth to know to seek to know what the government is doing both at the county and at the national level over back to you Shadrach. as you can see we are still proceeding on with the official launch Apparently, because of the current circumstances, which all of you participants, I'm sure you are aware of, they could not sit in one room and do the official launch together. We have to keep, we have new terms and words that now we have to memorize and practice. Some of them are social distancing, social and physical distancing. We have to keep sanitizing. We have to wear masks. So because of that, the launch they did in different rooms. Now we have gone over to the room of Honorable Lina Chelimo. Now I want to tell you a few things about Honorable Lina Chelimo before she begins to speak. Honorable Dr. Chebi Kilimo is the Chief Administrative Secretary, State Department for Livestock Fisheries, Fisheries, the Blue Economy and Aquaculture in the Ministry of Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives. She has served in various capacities, including being a member of parliament. She was in the Ministry of Immigration 2004 to 2005, in the Office of the Vice President 2003 to 2004. Honorable Lina Chalimo is a, a, a distinguished service stretching over 20 years as a member of the Kenya Women Parliamentary Association, where she served as a secretary. She was, of course, first elected into parliament in 2002. Those of you can remember, 2002, there were very many elections, and at that time, there was even a change of guard at the top. She is qualified with a honorary degree of divinity from Esther Mallet International Bible University in Noa, California. She has a bachelor's degree in counseling from the Kenya Methodist University. Madam Lina Chebi is come on board. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Honorable Lina Chebi Kilimo, Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives, and specific to the State Departments of Livestock and the State Departments of Fisheries and the Blue Economy. Thank you, first of all, for this opportunity and the work that the German Development Corporation has been doing almost 30 years working with the Ministry of Agriculture to address the issues of the youth in my country, Kenya. 
So first of all, I'm grateful to that. Now coming to livestock, I believe there is a great opportunity for the youth in the livestock sector, especially when it comes to value addition and marketing of the livestock and the livestock products. We are in a digital world and marketing everything digitally. This is where the youth come in handy. Of course, if they have to have their hands on, on the production themselves, then they, they, there is opportunity for them to engage in small, or small ruminants or things like uh, apiculture or poultry or keeping of pigs, which occupy a very, very small space considering that the elders might not want to let go uh, of the land. The obstacles with finances indeed is there. But mind you, these are the youth who believe in a, in a brighter future. Uh, they believe, uh, most youth believe in jumping into the water, then they can learn how to swim or that resources will follow them. So in most cases, uh, apart from it being an impediment, the issues of resources, uh, the government of Kenya has got a ministry specific to the youth, and we also have Youth Enterprise Fund. In cases where they are not able to access that, you will find the youth engaging in transporting livestock pro uh, products so that they can build up uh, their financial uh, base. You will find they are either transporting milk, for example, or growing hay, and this is where we encourage them to engage as they build their financial base, growing of hay, which they can harvest longer, and sometimes it grows on land that is more of wasteland, not very productive for, for growing crops, and in that way, they still participate. And we also have uh, the hides and skins from this it may not require much. It's a matter of where getting somebody who has slaughtered in their compound and taking working as middlemen. So I went into the value chain because that is where the greatest opportunity is. Somebody else is keeping the livestock or growing, whatever it is, then marketing, adding value, making yogurt. This is something that the youth can easily ask Mr. Google on how to make yogurt and they can make. And as I said, we have development partners, one of which is the uh, uh, German Development uh, Corporation and many other partners. They come in handy actually to help the youth start up enterprises in collaboration with the government of Kenya. And I have said we have a youth specific ministry. Even in the Ministry of Agriculture, we have incorporated the issues of youth uh, to ensure that they participate and shift from the white collar jobs into what I may consider as green collar job because they will always market, there is always market for food. Under the State Department of Fisheries, we also have blue economy. And what do we mean by blue economy? It is the economy found within the waters. And this is where it's one of the big four agendas in the government of Kenya about the issue of blue economy, and that is exploiting the natural resources within the waters and also creating in form of aquaculture or aquaponics. One of the things is that we have a training institute in Sagana where the youth are trained in aquaponics. We also have the youth along the coast. This is now where you will say in the ocean area where the, the government of Kenya has invested in training the youth so that they could go into deep sea to do fishing. They also train them on how to use the latest uh, uh, fishing vessels and like before where they would just use uh, maybe, maybe a line. Uh, we also have uh, in schools, because this is an area that is uh, free for exploitation. So far, we have 
uh, put up uh, fish ponds in about 35 secondary schools. And this is where the youth are really encouraged uh, in these schools that from there they can train. And this is where when people want to eat uh, healthy or they want just white meat, uh, that doesn't have a lot of chemicals. There is a niche for the youth in the blue economy. This is to sincerely uh, thank the German Development Corporation for the work that they implement through GIZ in collaboration with the government of Kenya. And the fact that they have managed to change the perception of agriculture from that being for older people to the youth. And I think the word Kilimo Bees really captures the minds of the youth that there is business in agriculture. And so I really thank all of them. And it is now my great honor with all my colleagues in the Ministry of Agriculture to launch the youth, the rural youth empowerment, uh, employment uh, program in Western Kenya. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We now have a program. We now have a program launched. Tukonamradi, we have a program launched. Maybe something I could add here. The design and the beginning of this program did not just come. It has come from the good bilateral relations that exist between the Federal Republic of Germany and the Republic of Kenya. From the bilateral friends, friendship, we have now this good program. And I would wish to congratulate also the leaders in these two countries for their good, good relationship because it has given us this program. Now, as we move forward, we are now sure we have a program on hand. We have a program to implement. You, you have a program to benefit you, and you have got their good initiatives, as you have heard from these two leaders who have officially now launched the program. Now I want to hand over to Dan so that you can take us further from here. Listening to you, I really concur that we have a program. But I'm also sure that there are people amongst the audience who may be asking themselves that they haven't really heard the gist of this program. And how come they haven't heard much of what exactly this program may entail? So at this level, I want to welcome Dr. Matthias Brown, who is a cluster coordinator for agriculture and rural development, just to help us appreciate how this particular program that has been launched today is positioned within the agriculture cluster in the German Development Corporation. Over to you, Dr. Brown. Yeah, I'm Matthias Brown. I'm the cluster coordinator of the uh, agriculture, rural development and youth employment cluster of the German Development Corporation here in Kenya. We, that is German Development Corporation, is with its implementing agencies, KFW and GIZ, and I'm a GIZ employee for a long time working in agriculture and rural development. Our question is, what, what are we doing here in agriculture in Kenya? We have a long-standing cooperation with Kenya with more than 30 years, maybe more than, uh, even more than 30 years. Uh, when we look at single projects, we have quite a, a uh, quite some successes on the way. With highlights, for example, the soil, the first soil type based fertilizer recommendations, with uh, fruit of many projects, the farm and range management handbooks, which are still in use and which we are republishing current, uh, currently. Then we have the introduction, re more recently, of uh, competency based training with the ATVET programs. We have uh, irrigation schemes like the Mount Kenya Smallholder Development Scheme, and we have the introduction of the value chain concept in uh, commercial agricultural development here. Currently, what are we doing now? We are working on the productivity of uh, crops and livestock. We're working on value chains there. We're working on food security and nutrition. We're working on resilience, mainly in the Azal counties. We're working on extension and vocational training services. And we're working on policy advice and framework conditions. And we're working with, uh, mainly with KFW, who does the uh, 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 financial cooperation on rural infrastructure. Our new focus 
is on rural youth employment in the agri-food sector, both for technical and financial cooperation. Where are we working? We are working currently in the other counties, that is Turkana and Marsabit, mainly on uh, resilience and food security. And in Western Kenya, this means the counties of Kakamega, Siaya, Bungoma, and soon in Vihiga and Kisumu since 2013 on the productivity, food security, extension uh, services and policy advice areas. We work as well in central Kenya, in one county in Yandawa, and in and around Mount Kenya with uh, KFW and the smallholder irrigation. The second question is, how does youth employment fit into this portfolio? It fits quite naturally. It is a natural development with our new focus on bringing youth into employment as overarching objective of the German Development Corporation. So we can build on previous work and on previous partners. This is the extension capacities, the ATVET system and the capacities in it, and with youth organizations and our policy advice, which was uh, at national and county level already, including youth in agribusiness strategy. We have long-standing partnerships with the Ministry of Agriculture at national level and the county ministries of agriculture and their services at the county levels. We're working as well with uh, our other GIZ projects in the, in the sector. This is the Green Innovation, Centers for Green Innovation, Pro Soil, and NUSEP, that is a project working on potatoes. So we can build on a network that we have built up and on the capacities that we have uh, already established and go now into the, direct, into the very interesting direction of youth employment. So we put the uh, capacities we have built up together with our partners into use and we join with new partners, that is mainly the private sector and the business development services. So I'm looking forward to a very interesting project development that is on the one side working with what we have built up already with our partners and the structures and the capacities into uh, a very useful and interesting new field that is putting it into use in youth employment or rural areas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Brown, for such an explicit presentation. I love the overview you have given and I really appreciate the way you have enabled us to now understand the different components of the project in a little more detail. At this juncture, I want to ask Nadine, I don't know whether Nadine is on call, Nadine Ganta, Nadine Ganta is the head of the component in Germany. Are you on call, Nadine? Yes, hello from Germany, I am here. Oh, I was wondering if you could uh, add something to this presentation just to help us understand the project a lot better. Yeah, thank you very much, Dan. Hello from Germany to everyone. Actually, we have prepared a video clip that explains our approach for the initiative, um, our target groups, our goals and activities, and of course also our potential partners that are also here and joined us today, that come from the private sector, from the public side, the youth uh, representatives, civil society and research. So I propose that we have a look at the video and then there will be room for questions and clarifications afterwards. So, And we hope that the video will give you a good impression on what the initiative will actually do in Western Kenya. Kenya is East Africa's largest economy and one of the leading economies in Africa. Agriculture is key to development and contributes directly and indirectly more than 50% to the GDP. 70% of our food is produced by smallholder farmers. More than 75% of Kenya's population is below 35 years. Every year, 1.3 million youth enter the labor market and struggle to find employment. Often, young people leave rural areas in the pursuit of white-collar jobs. Western Kenya is one of our bread baskets with great potential for agricultural production as well as up and downstream industries. About 30% of all Kenyans live in the Lake Region Economic Block. Climate conditions are favorable and high quality products can be produced in an economic way. However, employment opportunities and income levels are often low, with 
with a weakly represented private sector and lacking infrastructures. The governments of Kenya and Germany have therefore decided to focus on bringing youth into employment. The initiative. The initiative Rural Youth Employment in the Agri-Food Sector was designed in a joint and participatory manner with Kenyan stakeholders. It applies an integrated approach to promote employment in Western Kenya to realize the youth's potential in the sector, in agricultural production, plus value addition and services along the value chains. The initiative targets rural youth and women. It focuses on the counties of Bungoma, Kakamega, Kisumu, CIA and Vihiga County. The initiative will promote 1. Self-employment for farmers and entrepreneurs in agribusiness. 2. Employment in existing micro, small and medium enterprises and companies in the agri-food sector such as in processing, input supply and marketing. And 3. Employment in services along the agricultural value chains such as business development and information services. Employment improves if new jobs are created or the need for qualified work increases in existing jobs, also leading to higher incomes. The labor market is based on three main pillars, labor supply, labor demand, and the matching between both. These pillars are strengthened by a conducive ecosystem and employment enhancing framework conditions. Addressing all pillars and linking them is key to our approach. Let's compare this to the market hall. The first pillar of our hall represents the employability of the youth. Young people need to be qualified with technical, business and soft skills to uplift themselves and the regional economy. The second pillar is to support smallholder farmers, MSMEs and startups to increase the need for qualified work and to create employment opportunities. Thirdly, Labor demand and supply need to be matched well so that trained and qualified youth and the private sector come together and the youth find employment. 4. We need to overcome structural challenges, promote high quality extension and business development services and raise awareness that there is business and employment in the sector. 5. Strong policy frameworks for youth employment and private sector development improved legal regulations and a dynamic learning exchange strengthen the labor market and employment conditions. The initiative is actively working and supporting all these components. Who can benefit from it? 1. Agripreneurs. Young agripreneurs benefit from competence-based trainings as well as matching offers such as internship programs or career guidance. This group includes school leavers who are new to agribusiness, as well as more experienced agripreneurs who wish to build on their skills. 2. Micro, small and medium agricultural enterprises. The initiative also organizes training, coaching and mentoring for existing MSMEs in order to improve their business models, access to inputs, services, markets and finance. 3. Agri-food startups. Incubation and acceleration programs for agri-food startups upgrade youth from job seekers to job creators and provide the sector with demand-driven innovations. 4. Producer groups. Smallholder farmers and producer groups are supported to improve their products and to find better access to inputs, services and markets through contract farming formats or joint buying and selling. 5. Youth-led organizations. We work with youth-led organizations to improve their agribusiness services, advocacy, and participation in the sector. To achieve our goals, we work with a strong network of partners, training centers, service providers, companies, innovation and incubation centers, private sector alliances, financial institutions, civil society, research organizations, governmental partners, other networks and development partners. Together, the initiative and its partners aim at improving employability, strengthening participation, increasing employment and income, as well as improving employment prospects for young people in the long run. In short, we promote youth in pursuit of green collar jobs. Do you have questions or wish to express your interest in collaboration? We are excited to hear from you.
So we hope you all liked the video. And I would like to hand over to Dan to start the moderation of the questions and clarifications on what the initiative and GIZ in the green sector are doing. I think I've gotten one question, and that question is directed to the, to the private sector. I expected still more questions uh, from the youth, especially the youth who are on board, the youth in, uh, in Kakamega, the youth in Bugoma, the youth in Siaya. Please give us one question. Okay, maybe I'll ask uh, Nadine to explain to us, how do you think, the, one of the key issues about the youth is that youth do not have problems in accessing the actual factors of production, especially land. Well, what is this program going to do to address that issue? So I see you are starting with one of the most difficult aspects of rural youth employment, the access to land, which is a severe problem for many youngsters, as they told us uh, in Western Kenya. What the program is doing is that we are looking into the situation, we are trying to understand it, we are trying to create awareness among the different generations, we are going to work with the governmental partners to look at the structural challenges, but we have also seen that there are already good examples on the ground how young people together with their parents, together with the community, solved this problem for themselves and found good examples of how to gain access to land, convinced their parents to grant them land, um, got into uh, rental contracts for land. So we will try to also look at these good examples and try to scale them up, bring them to, to the awareness and um, yeah, try to, to make others aware that there are already some examples on the ground how to access land. Uh, of course, the question started as one of the big topics, and I'm very happy that you have handled that question very well. There is also another question. What kind of trainings will be offered for the youth, who will, for the youth in this program? I can try to answer this, and then I also would like to hand over that question to Dr. Brown, who will more look into the ATBIT sector. Um, what we can offer for the youth um, in case they want to start their own business is that we bring them technical training in the field of their project idea, that we help them develop innovative project ideas, innovative business models, be it, be it either in production, in processing, or in services along the value chain, also using digital uh, tools and devices, Internet of Things, and being creative and innovative and looking on what the market can, can actually bring to them. So we will go into incubation, coaching, mentoring, accelerating, and all this will be, of course, accompanied also by trainings. So this is on the, on the, uh, yeah, on the private sector side, let's say it like this. And then I would like to hand over this question to Dr. Brown, who can elaborate a bit on what will be done in the ATV sector for the skills development exactly. We have experience with the uh, demands of the private sector in the ATVET, that is agriculture training and vocational uh, training. We have uh, developed industry standards. So what does the industry really need as skills and, um, and knowledge and abilities of people who go through vocational training? This means we have a clearer picture of what is really demanded in a job, be it as an entrepreneur, be it as an employee of a company. So this means the skills, the the the, um, the uh, um, competency-based uh, vocational training is a basis for us to uh, help the youth in getting the skills and knowledge that they need. That is one side. There was a question before which said, "What beyond training are you offering?" We know that training is good, but not good enough. What is needed afterwards is uh, the development of business plans for people who want to start up businesses or on the one side that are realistic, that are taking into account the real demands of the markets and the capacities of a new business, what can be done. So we're having the business canvas, for example, as a really nice uh, model to see, to really think through a business model that can then be, that is the other side, be linked 
to financing organizations like the Youth Development Fund, starting the Agribus and Agrify project with incubation and also with linkages of um, potential businesses to financing organizations. Then the other matching or, or, or linkage that is needed is uh, to markets. That is already important for the business development plans to know what are the demands of the market. Not that I'm producing something that is, um, uh, let's say, a, a pepper variety. That is just a variety that is not needed. That grows very well. I have a very good harvest, but it is not needed by the market, which has other market standards. So that there's information and um, um, linkages to the markets to tell businesses exactly where is a market and what are the standards of this market? What do I have to produce in order to uh, market it? And then the, uh, with, the, with the training, one can calculate whether it is profitable for somebody. So first think of markets, then think of uh, producing. So we are helping in this environment um, the youth to uh, be more successful either as uh, young farmers, as uh, entrepreneurs with startup companies or as service providers for for uh, value chains and other businesses like extension services, etc., to uh, find their way and we accompany them on the way. So we are not in for the short term, but we are for the longer term because this is not uh, a project where you can do a short training and then everybody will be uh, capable of uh, running his or her own business or be successfully employed. Repeat, coming back to the same, to the other question that I had asked uh, Madam Nadine, it is not only for her, for the development partner or the program. That question also touches on the government. We have uh, representatives from the Minister of Agriculture. Professor Boga, are you on? I think uh, the issue of access uh, to land is uh, something that is we, we, we are working on in different aspects. Number one, of course, we are encouraging youth to lease land. There is a lot of idle land when you go around in the countryside and the leasing costs are not so expensive. I think once the youth have realized that by leasing land they can be able to produce and earn a fair income, I think this is one way in which in the agribusiness strategy we are proposing that they lease land. Even if it's from their own parents, they can also lease from their own parents so that it's not a handout. Of course, it's easier if it's, uh, they, are, they are allowed to use their ancestral land. The thing that is a framework of creating uh, SMEs that are production SMEs by availing public land that belongs to institutions like Calro, ADC, in small parcels of like 30 acres that can be used for production, commercial production, not subsistence production. But this policy is under development so that uh, we give this to youth, not for settlement, not for building houses, just for agricultural production. And this will also be leases. They will not be like uh, uh, title deeds uh, based on the thinking that is currently going on. And they will be part of a larger production ecosystem of large-scale farmers so that uh, already we can link the medium scale and the SMEs to large-scale farming to agro-processing hubs. And we are developing this together with uh, the African Development Bank and the in International Finance Cooperation of World Bank, and we hope in the next two months or so this thing will roll out. We also have our Enable Youth Project, which is addressing the issue of capacity building, working with incubation centers that have been identified across the country and supported. The, the, the youth will get support of loans that are very affordable through AFC, I think at, uh, five, at 3 to 5%. And uh, over the next three years, so that they can be able to to go on with production after capacity building has been done. The training consultant has already been selected. The incubation centers have already been selected. And I think in the coming financial year, we'll see 
being launched and we hope youth will be able to take advantage of it to enter the agribusiness uh, space. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Amadi Boga, the Principal Secretary. I am sure the youth who are here can also listen and hear that there are many other opportunities being created. Uh, allow me now to introduce a shift as we head towards closing. We want to subject you to a second poll. Kindly log in. And what we are simply asking this time, you had the capacity to invest in just one option. Which one would it be? Realizing that there are many ways of tackling the youth unemployment problem, we want you to select just one option that resonates with you, that you think would have the greatest impact. If you are to intervene in just one thing, transforming the situation of the youth with regard to agribusiness, what is it that it would be? What would you prefer to do? I'm seeing quite a number of people going for option two, equipping the youth with skills, knowledge, and information. Quite a number transforming negative perceptions, improving access to markets and market information. But they are also enhancing participation, is also enhancing access to finance. I'm sure even that the, the ones that have very low scores, it's not because they are not important, but I think people are simply saying if they have an option of choosing one, those are the ones they would go for. I want to hear a comment from the youth representatives. What do these results tell you? Do we have, do we have Gabriel in, uh, online? Gabriel Letunya from Kakamega. Thank you. Uh, that the results that we are seeing coming in are a true representation of what youth on, uh, are need on the ground. I'm seeing the access to finance, I'm seeing access to land, and uh, that that is exactly what youth are yearning for on the ground at the rural level. So that is, uh, I think, the best approach we can take to address those issues, and we are sure that we are going to create the impact that is required. Thank you. Do these results inspire you in any way? In other words, are there options that you see of youth doing things differently? What inspires me is that uh, youth, uh, right now, they're approaching agribusiness with uh, a lot of innovation. And the issue of uh, access to land, youth have learned that uh, it is possible for them to do farming without owning land. They can do renting of the land and they do production. But also through innovation and technology, they are able to engage into agribusiness by simply market. So I think uh, I'm inspired by what, by what I'm seeing. I, I love when you put it and say it's about the youth doing things differently and you're giving examples that even now they have started accessing land without necessarily having to buy or to own by simply leasing. Perfect. Can we hear from uh, the private sector? Do we have private sector representatives in the room? Jane, Jane, are you on call? Jane Gige? Yes, I am. Dan, if you can hear me, I am on call. Thank you, Jane, for coming on. Please say something about these results. What do they tell you? What do they inspire you towards as players in the private sector? Very interesting results, and especially because you see the very sound aspirations, and they have clearly stated where they need assistance. That, I think, is the most important thing in, this, uh, in these results. As institutions that try to support the youth, what innovations do you have uh, up your sleeves that you think can make things different moving forward? Um, speaking on behalf of uh, KEBSA and ASNET, uh, let me just begin by saying that ASNET is an umbrella body that represents all the agriculture value chains in Kenya, which was launched early this year. And this is an initiative between KEBSA, the Chamber of Commerce, and other BMOs uh, involved in the, in the business of agriculture. The key role here is to coordinate uh, the activities. And as you heard from the um, CAS, Madam Nyaga, one of our issues is duplication of development initiatives. If through the coordination of ASNET, we could manage 
this element, then we would um, ensure that resources that are available are used um, with the highest level of responsibility. Um, the ASNET uh, comprises a board of directors, uh, technical advisors, and most important, it also has a youth in agriculture committee. Uh, the youth uh, in agriculture committee will build on experiences that other programs in KEPSA have uh, been undertaken. For instance, the Kenya Youth Empowerment Program, the Ajira Digital Program, and as uh, we had, um, the youth are very keen to engage in ICT. And we do have the necessary or some of the necessary um, uh, experience in applying ICT to any business sector, but in particular for this uh, event today in the area of agriculture. And um, these resonate perfectly with the targeted capacity building by the program that has been launched by GIZ today. Um, the, our program also will embrace uh, the internships and monitoring, which has also been brought up by quite a few people in the, in the room. And uh, it also talks to the uh, building of skills. And in the past, we have looked at uh, an impact of about 40,000 people who have benefited from some of these programs. And they have actually grown into national programs under NITA and Tibet. Um, and as referred to by uh, Mr. Matthias a little earlier on in this program. So through the ASNET in, uh, intervention, we hope to build a very strong youth program for agriculture and to find opportunities to gainfully engage uh, in value addition um, among uh, through modern technology, like we've had, I think, from one of the participants, innovation, knowledge, input as value addition elements. We've also heard in the country about markets, and for instance, I'd just like to bring up one uh, issue in the egg, poultry industry, um, poultry industry and the eggs, where we know that one of the main concerns has been the fact that farmers are working very hard to produce eggs, but they lack a market. Yet, this is a country that is very well known uh, to import mayonnaise. What the country will reach. And here we are with dozens and dozens of trays of eggs that we don't know what to do with. Uh, the other thing that ASNET endeavors to do is to strengthen PMOs. And I've heard that um, through this program, we're putting in place uh, producer organizations, youth empowerment groups, and we would like to be able to share experience from this program and um, cross fertilize it with the experience we have in ASNET to be able to uh, empower or strengthen these BMOs so that they can also be part and parcel of the aspirations that are very well articulated in the ASTGS and indeed the National Export Development Strategy, uh, the, the Vision 2030 and the SDGs that our PS um, referred to earlier. Uh, ASNET looks forward to working with GIZ and, and to harness all the opportunities that are available to this country. Thank you very much, Dan. I want to just unpick one of the things you said when you were starting. You started by saying that having resources is one thing, but managing resources well is even better. I want to, I want to just appreciate and acknowledge that. I want to give the last chance to Pascal Kambudu. I don't know whether Pascal is on call. So I, I'm seeing the, the scoring there, and I'm seeing that there is equipping youth with skills and information and research and all that. But uh, I think what youth need more is the factors of production, making farm, farming look easier. And uh, we, I'm from AgriMec Africa Limited, and we offer mechanization services. And I think this is what will make the difference for the youth. This is about making agriculture sexy for the youth. <laughs> Uh, the idea is uh, we have uh, agricultural mechanization service hubs, which we set up, which we use for engaging the youth, becoming booking agents to earn money from aggregating work for machines to come and do in their own communities. And when this is going on, the the um, the youth are able to gain experience about farming as they participate as a as a, um, aggregators of the work. Eventually, they become mechanization service providers themselves. Uh, in the process, these, these uh, service providers will actually begin to 
talk to the people that are holding land idle, and you know Kenya has got a lot of idle land currently held by uh, the Dans and the, <laughs> the 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 Pascals who are in the who are in the city and have land idle. So we're talking about access to land by these youth. With mechanization, they can actually make deals where they farm these lands and share profits with the owners of this land. So this, this, is, this is what uh, we would like to offer the project. Uh, Western Kenya is, a, is, a, is a, a, an area of the country, is a breadbasket, but it's really been lagging behind in very many ways. And I actually believe that mechanization is the answer. So just, just a hint at, uh, at what we could do for the project uh, in a very short way for now. Is there any other good representative on call who can make a comment as we close this? If not, then I think let's watch the video clip of Nicholas as the last thing as we wind down to the closing remarks. Agribusiness offers a variety of solutions to social and economic issues of the youth. They'll have to form youth groups that will enable them to market their products. Again, the youth will form the circles, and through the circles, they'll access finance and even do a wide market of their commodities to different parts of the country or rather the world. There are job opportunities in agri-food sector. We have production where one could be in production line dealing with agricultural products. And again, we have marketing where one could specify in marketing the agri-producers. We have transport where one is needed to transport the commodities from the farm to the factory or to the consumer. Again, we have value addition this is where we transform the initial form of the agricultural product to the final part of it to be consumed. As an extension service provider, I'm helping other farmers to understand the challenges in poultry production and how to handle them, mitigation, and even to inform them on how to handle vaccines and drug potencies. I'm also informing them on marketing and challenges that they face on a day-to-day -day running of the business, for example, feeds, I also advise other youth that being an extension service provider will earn you a penny because I'm paid whenever I visit the farms and advise the farmers on what to do best and where to put their efforts more in poultry production. For instance, I have my financial advisor who is a youth by the name Rebecca Sarangi who takes control of my finance information and advises me on where to invest best. I think the video on Nicholas opens up tremendous opportunities for young people in terms of getting together into circles to enable them access better finance and market produce better, but also specific job opportunities within the agriculture sector, like in product production or increasing productivity, marketing the produce, being able to transport it to the markets and in value addition. Over to you, Shabra. I also realize that we have quite a number of our colleagues who have joined in uh, from the development partners. We want to thank them. As we go towards that end, we would wish to now invite uh, Dr. Brown to make a few comments as we go towards the end. And then after that, we invite uh, Professor Boga. Dr. Brown. Asante, Mr. Shadrach. So I'll uh, keep it short. I have talked before. The, uh, and I think everything has been said. There's a lot of interesting questions in the, uh, uh, in the chat on the site. And as um, I wrote there, we will try to answer everything. I thank everybody very much. I thank the youth for, for participating. I hope it was interesting for you. I thank the government for blessing and helping us uh, to implement this uh, joint in initiative together. I thank the development partners that are on board to see uh, um, that this is an innovative project of um, which where we are ready to share our experiences and uh, we are ready to cooperate of course because this is a tremendous task and uh, one of the key tasks for the development of Kenya as a whole and I thank the private sector to uh, voice its interest which is not uh, does not go without saying that is why should the private sector be interested in youth businesses. So I'm very glad that the private sector showed its interest 
in that. And I'm very sure we are having a, a very interesting project with uh, very interesting results that will lead to a uh, contribute to the development of Kenya in the agriculture as uh, as a whole. In other words, Kilimo Nibis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Brown, for those brief comments. And uh, now I would wish to request if I, Professor Boga. I would like to take this opportunity and uh, CASs who are with us in this uh, event really appreciate the work and the partnership with the GIZ and the German Development Corporation. This is a long, long lasting, stable and very mutually beneficial relationship to both our peoples. To the youth, I would like to say Kweli Kilimoni Biz. And uh, this has been shown also in this time of COVID-19, where everything else has, was shutting down, health and agriculture could not shut down. And uh, it is what is sustaining us and it is what is sustaining the rest of the economy. So I invite the youth to bring their energy and their imagination and their innovation into the agribusiness space. Uh, take advantage of the instruments, both by our development partners, as well as by government, as well as by the private sector, to get into agriculture and the related activities so that you can develop yourself, we can create wealth for the country, and we can make this country food, 100% food and nutrition secure. I don't think we can do it without the energy of the youth. The land is available. The finances are also available. Training opportunities are available. And business and market opportunities will be opened up, uh, both locally as well as abroad. And I think because uh, your generation is a well-educated generation, they'll be able to take better, uh, they will be able to take charge of, of the opportunities better maybe than even previous generation. So let me thank you and end it there and wish you a pleasant uh, afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Boga, the Principal Secretary. Thank you so much for that. Now, I think I'll head now to also now pass a vote of thanks for all of you who have participated in this uh, uh, launch. We really thank you on behalf of all the team that has organized, the team in Germany, thank you very much, the team here in Nairobi, all of you, thank you very much. We thank you for the great things that you have done to make this work. In particular, of course, we will thank to, we'd like to thank the German Embassy, which has, through uh, Daniel Eike, the Head of Development Cooperation, we also want to thank the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives, the Principal Secretaries, led by Professor Madi Boga, the two Chief Administrative Secretaries, Honorable Dr. Kilimo, uh, Dr. Lina Kilimo, um, Anne Nyaga, the Chief Administrative Secretaries, we also would wish to thank the county governments, led by the His Excellency, the Deputy Governor Kakamega, Philip Kutima. We thank you very much. We thank the development partners who have taken place, who have participated in this. I saw IFAD. Thank you very much, and quite a number of others. We thank the private sector, who have also taken, uh, who has participated in this, and whom will continue working with as we go on. Of course, finally, we thank the youth, not finally, but la not the least, but of course the biggest, the youth who are the beneficiaries and who are our targets, the targets of all of us, so that they can take over the mandal of agribusiness. So we thank you very much. In this launch, we are creating a momentum, all of us, so that we can make this program work, so that we can create enabling environment for job creation, for agribusiness, starting with the West, and the models that we are going to develop can also be used later in other parts of the country. So to all of you, thank you very much. And asante sana. May God bless you. Now we move on.
so that we can give us our closing prayer. 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 The youth, the youth from, from Siaya. Siaya. Okay. Okay. We are praying. Father, we come before you this time. Thanking you for the gift of life you've given unto each and every one of us, O oh Jehovah. Father, we thank you for everything you continue to do into our lives, O oh Jehovah. It is not for granted, O oh Jehovah, but because of your mercy, King of Kings, O oh Jehovah. Thank you even for the new project, King of Kings, O oh Jehovah, because it's going to help the youth to grow Jehovah. Protect each and every one, O oh Father, involved in the business. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you very much. Everybody say Amen. Amen. And may God bless you. May God provide to all of you so that we can continue delivering on this. Thank you very much. Asante Nisana.